because the US Open starts today at Shinnecock Hills. Uh, our man Joe Malloy is with us this morning to give us a bit of a preview about what we should expect. Joe, the US Open has um, kind of lost its soul in recent years. Does it get it back here at Shinnecock Hills? Uh, that is the word. How you doing, lads? Yeah, there's been a real kind of US Open has lost its identity discussion over the last number of years. So the US Open is always talked about as, quote, the toughest test in golf. That's what it's supposed to be. Par is meant to be a brilliant score. Uh, you're going back to Justin Rose in 2013 for the last time there was an over par winner. So the last four have all been in the red. Brooks Kepka won on 16 under last year. Fairways were 60 yards wide. People are kind of wondering, what is this? What, what is it meant to be? And they've had a number of cock-ups and, and, and Mike Davis has had some weird course designs and they went to Chambers Bay a couple of years ago, which looked like a different planet. So uh, there's been an element of wondering, does the US Open want to get a few more birdies, maybe a bit more excitement? What's the plan here? Uh, David Duval, who has kind of turned into one of the best pundits around, has uh, said in the last day or so, I'm excited to see a proper US Open again. I'm hoping that the golf course is fair, but severe and penal. And, you know, look, it's not quite the traditional single file fairways and terrific rough. The fairways are uh, more generous than they might have been 10, 20 years ago. But they're seeing, they're talking about this now as a real return to form. Uh, the course is highly regarded by everybody. And they've just, the last number of years, they've got a different courses. Erin Hills last year, Chambers Bay. They're back here at Shinnecock, which is like one of the five founding courses, held the second ever US Open. And the next like 10 years look pretty safe from a US Open point of view. They'll be back to Oakmont, Toy Pines, Pebble Beach uh, twice, Winged Foot. They'll be back to Shinnecock again, where this is. So they kind of, they've had this weird phase in the last kind of five, six years. And there's a sense now that they're getting back to a more tried and tested US Open. So Shinnecock um, would have been one of those names from our youth that we would remember. The last time was there, Goosen won it. Is that right? Yeah, 2004. So Shinnecock is real old school, you know, uh, held the second ever US Open in like 1896. Is kind of one of the founding five USGA courses. And lots of people say it's one of the best courses in America, best courses in the world. So yeah, Retief Goosen in 04. And in, in some respects, um, like they made such a mess of it in 04. Uh, it was like a spectacular uh, balls up in 04 with the course. You can kind of understand maybe why they've lost their identity or lost their way a little bit. Like in 04, the average score on a Sunday was a 79. And only two players finished under par for the tournament. That was Goosen and Mickelson. Is that not what like they want? It, Do they not want the average score to be 79? Yeah, it's, it's a funny one because you see, you, 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 they, I do have a bit of sympathy for them in some ways because they walk this tight line between toughest test in golf and like just a farce, you know? And so in 04, like the seventh green has kind of gone down in infamy whereby you couldn't hold the green from 150, 60 yards. It was part three, but you couldn't hold the green because it was just rock hard and the ball would roll off. Uh, like Phil Mickelson's caddy told him, you have to hit the bunker. It's the only way to get a three here. Uh, Mickelson finished second, ultimately. So Mickelson deliberately had to hit the bunker and get up and down next car and get the hell off. And in between players, they were frantically watering. These guys with hoses are watering the green to try and soften it up somehow to no avail. And like their weird logic was, if someone makes a double bogey, we water the hole, we water the green. And if someone doesn't, we hold off for 20 minutes. It was a complete mess. The players are saying, look, this is kind of gotten out of control. So, you know, you, you, they walk that line and it can be probably a difficult one to walk. Is it a completely different course now? Would it look completely different to the naked eye? Like I see Ben Crenshaw was involved in redesigning the course almost since 04. Yeah. Has it just been a matter of bringing the, the fairways out a little bit wider and making those greens a little bit softer? They've made it longer as well. It's up to 7,400 yards now and the greens or the fairways on average are about 15 yards wider. So to the naked eye, it looks quite generous. And a lot of the fairways are 40 odd yards wide, which is very generous. And some of them are 60 yards wide. They've made the greens bigger as well. Like what you're going to see here is Ted Scott, who's Bubba Watson's caddy. He tweeted that the bombers, a bomber is going to win. So he thinks it's a really long course and you'll be able to use driver a lot. So he thinks a player with length is going to win. Uh, Everybody else has kind of said it's a second shot golf course, you know, it's about your iron play in because they've made the greens a bit bigger. Um, but actually, the space to land it on the greens is very small. There are runoff areas all over the shop. What you're going to see a lot of here is balls landing on greens and just catching the wrong side of a slope and rolling off. And not just rolling off the edge. 
like rolling 20 yards down a steep hill. Like there'll be certain shots where a player hit a good pitch shot in and the ball's going to run all the way back down to his feet. You're going to have those kind of moments. So they're saying it's a second shot golf course more than anything. So iron play and scrambling is going to be ultimately what's going to prevail, maybe more than distance. Two names that people are talking about in the build-up with um, the best chances, um, Justin Rose and Dustin Johnson. Obviously, Johnson is in sensational form at the moment. Does he have yeah. the game and the patience to win this week? Yeah, he has everything. Like, he's just scary good. He's just brilliant. And he won last week. I mean, he drives the ball forever. His wedge play is brilliant as well. He's putting pretty well at the moment. And, you know, he won last week. People say it's tough to win you know, in consecutive weeks. He won twice in a row in 2017. He won three times in a row in 2016. He's the kind of player who's happy to win in fits and spurts. Uh, like, look, he's played 12 times this year. He's won twice. He's finished uh, second twice. He's at eight top tens. His US Open record is phenomenal. Like, he's scary good. He's more than deserved favourite. He's back to world number one. Like, he's brilliant, you know, much maligned. You know, Dustin Johnson, not very smart. He is brilliant. What about Justin Rose? Yeah, I really like Rose. Uh, he's, I mean, he won the US Open obviously a couple of years ago. Uh, he's in brilliant form. Like Rose, I mean, when you think when you when you talk about this course where distance is handy, he takes that box. Iron play is going to be massively important. He absolutely takes that box in a huge way. Uh, the thing about Rose, and it's always been the thing, is his putting, and he has turned himself into a very, very, very good putter. He's now like top twenty putter on tour in strokes gained this year. So. Look, I, I kind of I backed him for the Masters and he sort of let me down. He didn't have a great week and ever going. Uh, Rose is like in the peak. You know, this is he's he, he's almost certainly going to win another major or two in his career. He's at his absolute peak now. He's, he loves the U.S. Open. Uh, Lawrence Donegan tipped him during the week. He definitely has a huge chance. I mean, if he if he clicks at all and he is in great form, then Rose is really hard to beat. He's such a U.S. Open player. What about Phil and Tiger? Are they? A heritage act this week that people are coming along to see for nostalgia reasons or are they both capable of being relevant down the stretch on Sunday? Both, in a way, kind of both. I mean, more the former if we're being brutal. Uh, like Phil is just, uh, look, I, I adore Phil. He's amazing, he's a genius. And you would think, you know, you can imagine him scrambling around these really tough greens brilliantly. Uh, Phil is looking um, He's been second at the US Open five times. Like, it's beyond cruel. Once in 04 here at Shinnecock. Uh, he's playing okay. The worry with Phil is, and it's always the worry, his driving is erratic. He's never going to be a good driver. And the fairways are wider, but the rough is thick. Like, this is not Aaron Hills last year. This is really thick, uh, terrible uh, rough. So, look, he's a long shot. But, I mean, he can just do something magic. As for Tiger... Tiger's a, weird, Tiger's a weird case this year. Um, in different weeks, different parts of his game have been unbelievable. Like last week at Memorial, his iron play was back. And, and you know, greater golf minds than me have certainly said it. Trip Eisenhower on the Golf Channel was just saying it the other day. His iron play was like Tiger Woods back in the day kind of level. Like, like it was just, this is unbelievable. And this is a second shot golf course. This is really promising. Uh, but he couldn't put... Like he really, he was terrible, and he's been very erratic with the driver. Now, another earlier in the season, he put it very well, and his irons weren't so good. And then he's had days where his driving's been okay. He's never, he's, he hasn't had many rounds where he's put it all together. Uh, you kind of feel like he's a, he's a year away from maybe it all clicking. But like who knows? It wouldn't shock anyone. He's put in some really, really brilliant rounds. Like he is, he's not back, back. He's back, uh, kind of a thing. Uh, that's where he is on the uh, backometer. Uh, he's staying in his $20 million yacht, 14 miles off the coast. Apparently the traffic there on, uh, so we're kind of Hamptons, Long Island, that has got Fitzgerald oh, right, territory. Okay. Yeah, no, this, this is the real, this is good stuff. Actually, Phil always plays well in New York for some reason. That's another kind of slight quirk of Phil. He loves the crowd, they love him. But um, apparently traffic's dreadful. Like they're, they're genuinely worried someone's gonna miss a tea time. So people are putting, you know, here to Shinnecock into their Google Maps and it's saying your hotel's 45 minutes away. And three hours later, they're coming into the parking lot. Uh, apparently, they made a complete. The US Open makes a mess of something. Uh, this year, they think, thankfully, it'll be the traffic. Um, but Tiger is staying in his $20 million yacht 40 miles off the coast, so he's got a quick commute. He seems to be like in good form and happy and, and all that kind of stuff. But the new book out about him uh, is kind of dreadful and full of awful anecdotes of his kind of casual rudeness and disdain for people. 
So um, it's more than yeah, the, kind of, the Navy SEAL stuff. It's it's there's further details, is there? Uh, oh, like it's a brilliant book. We're gonna have the authors on next week. Like they go into great detail on the sex addiction and all that business, and like it's far worse than I'd ever thought. Like the numbers are off the charts. Um, it, but more than that, it's his casual, awful day-to-day -day entitlement and disdain for people. Like a really quick anecdote, if you've time. This is just like a, you know, this is just like one page in a three hundred page book. But so for some reason, it stayed with me every time I look at him now. Uh, Mark O'Meara, great friends with Mark O'Meara and his family, and he would always stay with the O'Meara's at the house they rented at Augusta. He's a bit cheap as well. That's like a theme in the book. So we'd always take their spare room in that spare house. Mark O'Meara wins Augusta. I can't remember exactly what year it is. Tiger's staying with him. They're back to the house to get changed to leg it back to Augusta for a champion's dinner that Sunday night. And so Tiger's been staying in this house a long time, a couple of years at this stage. O'Meara sends him next door where his wife is with the neighbours who, you know, the O'Meara's are nice people. They've gotten to know over the years they're having some champagne. Check what time we have to go at. Tiger goes next door. There's like five, six, seven, eight women having a glass of champagne celebrating with Mark O'Meara's wife. And uh, I'm, I think it's O'Meara's wife. Someone in the room anyway says, oh, hi, Tiger. By the way, this is, I can't remember her name. This is uh, Rosie, let's call her. This is Rosie. It's it's her house you've been staying in all these years. Rosie kind of stands up. Hi, Tiger. It's really, she's good to meet you. It's my, my house. You know, I move out for the week and you stayed in my house all these. It's great to meet you. Tiger, according to the book, and the authors confirmed this, we've spoken to him, just looks at her for a beat, doesn't react, turns to Mark O'Meara's wife, says, Mark wants to know what time we're leaving at. Oh, my God. And exits. <laughs> and it's... And it's this kind of like repeated, awful, casual rudeness that happens again and again and again and again, which in a way, when you read the book, is more like grotesque and awful than the grotesque awfulness of his infidelity. So, you know, look, I, the, the, the authors, by the way, they do think he's changed. They're buying the new Tiger Act. Uh, I know certainly one cynic in that room there won't buy it. Oh, and I don't know how you feel, but, you know, it's... He seems like a changed person. He genuinely does, but the book does him no favours. It's really, really grim. So the, the hoteliers or the people with spare rooms in Donegal might be happy. He's, he's not going to play the Irish Open, Joe, by the sounds of no. things. Is that something no, that breaks your heart a little just, bit? Ah, uh, yeah. Jeez, like, it's weird. Look, he's still the most interesting thing in golf. And when he's playing and in his red shirt and his cap, I'm kind of rooting for him. I'm unsure off the course. Uh, Steinberg said Lynch is sort of like a vague possibility next year. He said that just right. this week. Um, now, look, I mean... I think it was the quote was as, went as far as Tiger loves Ireland. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he loves Woo! the horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's been kind of headlines. Uh, look, so Tiger's an interesting one. Probably more the heritage side of things, but um, hey, look, you know, you really never know. And he, he has he, he it's it's not um, baseless. Like he has performed well across the year at times. Yeah. That book is just called Tiger Woods. If anybody wants to take it out, is it? Is it? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, full of anecdotes. Like Tiger comes across terribly, and his father comes across. Worse. Oh, oh, like Earl lived out his days in the end when he ultimately separated from his wife, Tiger's mother, in like a house where porn was on the TV 24 hours a day and there were women employed to look after him and his every need. Right. And it was just a, not, a, not a pleasant existence. It sounds pretty great. Um, yeah. Before we wrap up, I just want to get one question in on uh, Rory, Joe, because it's a, yeah. a strange one. Rory seems... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, weirdly content with his game at the moment. Is he, like, an, does that contentment maybe speak to a lack of killer instinct, which has been shown on the course? I know he's had one win, but it's still only one win this season, given the positions he's been in. Mm. Like, I, 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 it's a legitimate question to start asking. Like, it's hard to go and ask it about Rory McIlroy because he has won four majors. Yeah. Um, but we're now into year four. Like, I was just thinking, four years ago, it was coming down from Brazil. I stopped off to watch him win the open in 2014 and then he won the USPGA a month later and he's like four years younger so what is he 24 and yeah you know, like we were really thinking oh my god this guy's gonna win 10 12 13 14 majors this is unbelievable and you know a bit like it's 10 years since Tiger won a major it's now four years uh, since Rory won a major which is kind of mad I don't it's hard to know what's going on with him in some ways I know the reports are he's playing really well people have followed him around the caddies and say he's hitting the ball beautifully uh, he lo he knows this course is worth mentioning. He's been playing this course on the side for years. He first played here with Bill Clinton in 2013 because that's kind of how Rory uh, rolls now. Uh, so he really likes the course. I mean, it probably as ever comes down to his putting. He's about 57, 58 on tour and putting at the moment. 
it's like, you know, it's it's okay, and, and maybe he has a good week. Uh, he said he's going to play very conservatively this week, uh, which is kind of which is kind of right. It's hard to know. I mean, maybe he's just too well adjusted for his own good. Um, but then other times you do get the sense it eats away at him that he's not winning more. Um, but his game seems to be in good shape, and he likes the course, and he's a very experienced player now. This is like his tenth U.S. Open. He's played eighteen of the last nineteen days. You get the sense he's starting to realise the years are going by, mm. and like they are, and bloody hell, the next generation are good. They look at Rory off the tee, and they're not so scared of his length. Like when the poor Carrington generation are looking back at Rory going, how does he hit the ball so goddamn far? The generation behind them are saying, yeah, you know, that's kind of, you know, he's that, and that was his big asset. So, look, the clock's ticking in a, in a very slow way, but the clock is ticking for Rory. Good stuff, Joe. Enjoy it. Thanks a million. All right, lads. See you. More from Joe on uh, the radio. I was going to say tonight, but actually it's going to be Nathan. So uh, you'll hear from him again on Sunday. Of course,